Hi, everybody. Great to see you. Happy Monday. Glad you could join me. Today, we are talking about how you talk to your kids. You know, I love looking up the wacky holidays that there are on the calendar. Um, you know, every day there's something bizarre, like search wacky holidays of the year on Google, and you will come up with some really crazy stuff. So today is punctuation day. And we are going to celebrate all week all about these wacky holidays. Tomorrow is comic book day. So we're talking about, you know, the whole comic book thing. But today is punctuation day. And I thought the best way to celebrate punctuation day was to talk about the way you talk about, you talk not about your kids, but to your kids. The way you speak, the sound of your voice, the, hi guys, hi dog, how are you? Sorry, you know, the way you, you know, are you too loud, are you too quiet, are you screaming, are you yelling, are you using your manners? All the things that you do to talk to your kids and communicate with your kids and what is that resulting in as far as their response goes to you. Okay, so as you're coming on, share this out to your peeps, Glad you're here. Replay viewers, also so glad you're here. Replay viewers on Facebook. Feel free to comment and uh, also get involved in the conversation. Replay viewers on Periscope. I know you can't comment, but you can certainly share this out. So let's get our communication a little better between each other and our kids. Okay, so let's start uh, talking about um, why you're here and who you're talking to. So my name is Celia and I'm a family empowerment coach. So simply put, I empower you through parenting tips, health, wellness, mindset, everything you need to fill that toolbox so that you can empower yourself, your relationship and your kids. And you can really just, you know, reach the goals that you guys are trying to reach in your family. And I hope you have goals and you have vision that you're trying to reach. So let's not waste time. Let's get started on communicating to your kids. Because guys, I'm telling you, this is vitally important. This is the trick. The way you say things is the way they're going to say things back to you. So if you're talking harshly, they're going to talk harsh back to you. Hi, Mrs. Hadisev. All right, so we got 10 tips. So we got a lot to go through. So let's get started. Number one, children will listen better if you speak to them respectfully and kindly. You know, if you're screaming at your kids and parents say to me all the time, they don't listen unless I scream. Well, you know what? They listen because you're screaming because they are now on the defensive and they're getting fearful of you. Is that what you want? You want your kids to be live in fear of you? No. Instead, you should be in a calmer mode, talking more respectively to them and using your manners and that will get them to respond respectively to you. Number two. Once you're screaming, they're screaming, you're screaming, it's a screaming match, you are wind, you will wind up with an entire lifetime of screaming matches. So if you don't want to do that, hi black belt, if you don't want to do that, calm it down, really do my advice of take three before you respond to a situation. That means you take three minutes if you think you are going to respond and scream at your kids. Go take three minute time out and chill out so you can think about your response and it can be a more productive response. Okay, number three, cussing. Let's talk about cussing. You know, there was a post in one of the mommy's groups that said, who likes to cuss at their kids? I mean, I just cuss. So I cuss at my kids all the time. And then I said, in the replies, what happens if your kids cuss back to you? And they said, they get in trouble. They know that they can't cuss back to me. So give me a one if you're the type of person that cusses to your kids. And give me a two if you're going to get your kids in trouble, if they're going to get in trouble, if they cuss at you. Because you know what, guys? 
You cannot punish your children for something that they, that you have taught them. They are watching you all the time. If you are cussing, they are cussing. So don't be surprised when you hear them cuss because you taught them. So if you don't want them to learn something, don't do it. Don't do the old do as I say, not as I do garbage because your kids will do as you do. All right. Number four, manners and a smile. When you speak with your manners, automatically what you say is kinder. When you smile when you talk, you reach a kinder audience. Do you ever talk to somebody on the phone and you can hear them smiling? Or you can hear them being real grumpy. Hi, Jamie. You know, and they're kind of moping and you know they're miserable. And you're only on the phone. You can't see them. But if they're smiling, you can hear a smile. You have horrible teeth, Chad. You know what? I know, you know, my son actually feels the same way about his teeth. Hi, guys. Thank you for joining me. So maybe you can smile with your mouth closed a little bit, but still practice smiling. It is vitally important. And if you can teach your kids to smile when they talk, you are giving them a gift that will take them through life with huge success. Number five, encourage cooperation by speaking kindly to your kids and getting them involved in their, you know, consequences in their, their cooperation in the house, what they want to take part of. They like to do that. They like to know that they're part of a family and they're part of the group and they're part of the team. That will not only get them involved in stuff and get them helping you, but that will also lead to more and more conversations. And if you have specific questions that you're asking your kids, you can really get a conversation going. Don't just, hi, Mert. Hi, Barack. Don't just, you know, they come home from school and say, how was your day? How was your day will be an answer of fine or okay, a very short answer. But my name is Celia. But what is the specific thing you want to know about their day? Do you have homework? Who did you sit next to in lunch? Did you talk about something in lunch with your friend? What did you do at recess? Speak specific about that. Hi, Turkey. Hi from Turkey. Welcome, welcome. Okay, number three, number six, right? Number six, I can't even count. Kids will follow your lead. So once again, the calmer you are in responses in talking to your kids, hi, Karen, the calmer they will be in talking. If you're yelling, they will yell back. If you are calm, they will respond calmly. Who has had experience with it? Who has tried to change up the way they respond to your child if your child's yelling. I'm telling you, if you just chill out, let them yell, and then respond calmly, it changes the whole atmosphere. If your kid's having a tantrum, let them chill out, let them get over it, and then talk calmly to them. It works, guys. I'm telling you, it works. And remember to take three. Take three minutes before you respond if you have to, and thank you for the hearts, guys. Okay. Text and email. Now, this is like a huge thing, and I really want to touch on this today because so many of our kids are responding and having conversation through text messages and emails, and they're losing that face-to-face -face that we have now where you can see that I'm happy. They're losing that with their friends because they're not looking at them. They're communicating through a typed word. So when I communicate through a text, through an email, and I'm talking to my employees, I'm talking to anyone, honestly, I make a huge effort to be overly polite in my email or text. Use emojis so that they know, hi Miranda, that they know my, the way I am saying what I'm saying because, you know, give me a one if you have sent a message to somebody and they read it 
totally out of context. And they thought you were mad at them. And you weren't mad at them. That's just the way they read it. Like you could read something like, type something like, why do I need that? And they could read it as, why do I need that? Instead, you meant it as a question. So why do I need that? And they took offense and you didn't mean it that way. And for kids today, guys, it is causing all kinds of problems for them. I mean, they're just not communicating with the personal expressions that we have communicated with in the past. It's a huge problem. So really talk to your kids about their punctuation on punctuation day and the punctuation they use in texting, in emails, to communicate to each other so that it is not read incorrectly. Hi, Amanda, like a post on Facebook, you know, add those emojis that, you know, they're the emotions of this century. But since you can't see a face, add the emojis. It helps hearts, smiley faces, all those things so that somebody doesn't read something in a different context than that, than it was meant for. Okay, when you speak kindly to your kids, this is number eight. I can't hear it on my phone, but I'm going to share it. So remember later to watch. Excellent, Amanda. Thank you so much for sharing. And guys, share this out. Wouldn't it be nice to have better communication with parents? And I've got a special offer for you guys at the end of this broadcast. Um, so we'll get to that. We'll get to that. All right. So when you speak kindly... Sorry, time out for water. <clears throat> when you speak kindly to your children and you smile, you teach them to be comfortable with talking and they're able to talk to adults or children. They're comfortable both ways. You know, when my son, who is now 30, turning 30 on Wednesday, went to middle school, I had a secretary say to me, this was one of the nicest comments I think any secret, any school person ever said to me. And they said, oh, you're Kyle's mom. I have to tell you, Kyle is so pleasant. It doesn't matter who he is talking to, whether he's talking to administration or staff or a teacher or his friends. He always speaks with respect. He's funny. He's hysterical. And he's always great to talk to no matter who he's talking to. What a great compliment. I was thrilled to hear that. But it's because that's how we are in the home. We're happy. We're having fun. We're smiling. We're joking. We're talking respectively to each other. So that's something to remember when communicating with your kids. It gives them the ease of communication to their superiors, to their teachers, to neighbors, and to kids alike. It all opens up to the same happy communication. Okay, number nine. When you're talking to your kids, let's have eye-to-eye -eye communication and put down the distractions. Put your phone away, put your tablets away, have them put away, turn off the TV, look them in the eye and speak to them with respect that they deserve and they will return that respect to you. A lot of times parents tell me, oh, well, they have to respect me. I'm their parent. No, they don't. Why do they have to respect you? Respect is earned. So if you treat them with respect, they will return the respect to you. And it's same with like you're in, the, you're in the workplace. How many times are you in the workplace and somebody just is totally obnoxious to you and treats you like you're a piece of garbage? Or do you respect that person? Heck no. You do not respect them because they don't respect you. And I don't care who they are. You don't respect them. You may feel that way with a family member and the way they talk to you. Respect is earned and it goes the same way for parents to children and children to parents as it does in any other relationship. All right. Number 10, the volume of your voice. So let's talk a little bit about volume. Now, I am a teacher. I'm a kids fitness teacher. I have a kids fitness company and I talk loud. As you can tell, you can hear me really well. I don't use microphones or anything like that because I talk loud. But when I teach, I teach even louder than this. And I'm not going to compare it because you guys, I'll blow your ears off. But I am not yelling. 
I am just speaking louder. And if I'm talking to my grandkids or my kids and I'm reprimanding them for something, I may speak firmly, but I don't yell and scream. And when I'm teaching a huge group of kids and I'm doing like a birthday party or a class and I need to get them in order, I may speak firm, but I don't yell and not one kid ever thinks I'm yelling at them. At the end of class, they're hugging me, they're loving me, but I spoke firm and I got them to listen to everything I need to listen to. That is how you should be parenting your children. There are times when you need to speak firmly and address a situation, but it doesn't need to be yelling. Your voice, what you say, for instance, if your child goes to hit you, and he's just, you know, he's a toddler and he's got all these emotions and that's his reaction is to hit you. Grab his hand before it hits you and say firmly, I cannot let you hit me. I cannot let you hit me. That is firm. It is direct. It's not saying I can't let you hit mommy. Like who is mommy? Some person in the room. No, speak in the first person. Be firm, be direct, be simple and short. But do not scream and yell. Just be firm. And he knows or she knows that you're in control of the situation. And they will learn not to hit you. It's a reaction because their little toddler brains are so full of emotion that sometimes they get overwhelmed and they don't know what to do and they lash out. But you are the one that's teaching them their self-control, their self-regulation, and it's done through the way you communicate with them. So those are your 10 tips. Now, I've got a great offer for you. If you're a pissed off parent, if your parenting just makes you crazy and you get way too pissed off at your kids and you don't really like it, it gets mad at you, give me a one in the comments because I'm going to have a two hour workshop on October 13th. I believe that's the day that's a Saturday. You can sign up. It's going to be interactive. This is not a webinar. This is not a recorded thing. This is live with me on Zoom conference calling. You get to ask questions. You get to talk to me. You get to like have me resolve some issues that you were having. You get to learn about all kinds of techniques so you can stop being so pissed off. And you can be happy and you can have a happy home life. You can have cooperation instead of conflict. Wouldn't that be wonderful to have more smiles and less trials? Wouldn't it be wonderful to actually ask your children for their input on things and have them respond? Wouldn't it be wonderful to just have a happier house with less yelling and screaming? Nobody wants that. Nobody wants to grow up in an environment of screaming and you don't want to have an environment of screaming. So if you've, you're pissed off and you've had it up to here, guys, Go to pissedoffparenting.com, wrong, pissedoffparents.com, sorry, parents, not parenting, pissed off parents, P-I-S-S-E-D-O-F-F-P-A-R-E-N-T-S.com, sign up for my two-hour workshop. If we go a little longer with question and answer, we go a little longer, I don't care. I'm not setting, stopping the clock in two hours, but you're going to learn a lot. You get to talk a lot. You get to ask a lot and you get to really change the way your household is sounding and being run right now. You will have stuff that will you can put in your toolbox and you can start it that day on Saturday and start getting changes in your lives and your kids' lives. Pissedoffparents.com, I'd love to have you join me. In the meantime, if you're on Periscope and we're not friends... Heaven forbid, we need to be friends. So friend me, send me a message that you saw me on Periscope. I'd love to be your friend. Join Pumped Up Parenting on Facebook. It's our Facebook group. And in the meantime, hi, Melinda. In the meantime, guys, let me let you know what the lineup is because all week at two o'clock, we are talking about these crazy holidays. Tomorrow is comic book day. Woo! Who doesn't love comic books? I love comic books. Comic book day tomorrow. Love note day on Wednesday. These are legitimate holidays. And Friday is ask stupid question day. So we get to ask all kinds of stupid questions. How fun. So get ready for a fun week. 
Let me know if you have any questions or anything you'd like me to address. Love to have you in the Pissed Off Parent Workshop on Saturday, October 13th. It starts at 8.30 in the morning. And in the meantime, guys, I'm so grateful that you chose to spend a little time to hang out with me. I am truly blessed for that. And I wish you all peace, love, and tons of laughter. I'm telling you, it's the best medicine. Laugh with those kids. Tell jokes. Have a joke night tonight at dinner. And I will see you here tomorrow at 2 o'clock for Comic Book Day. We love comic books. I have a great story to tell you about comic books. We'll tell it tomorrow. See you then, guys. Bye-bye.